there is something I've noticed. Probably you've noticed it too. And that is that people prefer to be offended than to be challenged. For example, let's say you, you go, in, go on a panel and they talk about issues of youth criminality. Well, I can guarantee you, whether it's a white panel, a black panel, an Asian panel, Hispanic panel, you will hear a lot of complaints of how offended people are. They will say things as, oh, the youth of the day, they have no respect, or this and that. They will discuss all of those things, how horrible men of the youth are. But there's one thing none of them offer. A clear analysis on how they, the older generation, failed. They will blame it all on the youth. But here's the thing. The youth didn't exist 20 years ago. Or even 15 years ago. They did. They were in the teens themselves. So, the youth were little babies when they were in their late teens or in their early 20s. So, or some were, some were even older, in the early 30s. So, the youth grew up in what they left for them. So, if there's a lot of youth criminality, that means that the older generations failed somewhere. Whereas they failed in providing enough economic opportunities, or whether they failed to intervene in broken families, or whether it was a lot of domestic violence, somewhere they failed. And somewhere they need to accept the bad consequences of what's going on. Look, if you fail to do something that you should have done, if that's neglect. And if you neglect, even if you later admit it and you repent, there are still going to be consequences that can't be undone. For example, if there is a bridge that's not well maintained and a car crashed on the bridge and people died, you can't get the lives of those people back. So you can fix the bridge now, but there will also be a remembrance that someone died there due to neglect. And the relatives of those people will never look at you the same way again. And anyone who finds out about it, well, your reputation will be challenged. So even if you repent later on, there are going to be consequences you'll have to endure. That's life, that's facts. But go to any panel, whether it's on YouTube, or, uh, on StreamYard, or Spreaker, or maybe on Facebook Live, where people discuss things like youth criminality, check how many are realistic in admitting their faults and their neglect and their failures as the older generations. It likely will not happen because they're so filled with offense. Now, Let's go to another topic, topic of sexual harassment and violence against women. There's also sexual violence against men, but people don't talk about it. What about violence against children? What, what about the women who are also involved in child trafficking? There are also women that are quite sexually perverted and evil, but you don't hear feminists talk about that. It's always men, men, men. Instead of, for example, there's this meme that, that's written, protect your daughter, and then you have a mark through it that says, advocate your son. So they put all the blame of all the sexual tragedies that happens to women on men. Hold on. I thought males and females were equal according to feminism. So how come they put all the blame now with sexual harassment on men? Why didn't they ever talk about the sexual harassment against men? Or why do we ever talk about how some women on purpose put themselves in dangerous situations just to play the victim to get sympathy? Why do we talk about that? No, because if they really have to address the root issues of sexual violence, then they need to face themselves, they need to face their parents, they need to face the uncomfortable reality of their own people and their upbringing. And they don't want that. So they prefer to be offended and to go off in attacks than to simply be challenged with the facts. Maybe you've experienced this as a child. Your mom or dad or some other adult said something that really didn't add up and you just questioned it or you looked a bit weird and they suddenly become very upset with you, saying you're rude, you need to learn manners. 
some of them, some some few even had a parent or some older you becoming violent towards you, threatening you to hit you, whatever, or they scream at you. Why? Because they can't handle being challenged. So they go into the offense mode immediately. Listen, the offense mode in which people feel victimized. But when people are fed up and upset because things will go their way, it's a defense mode. It's a self def it's a defense mechanism against being challenged. And I'm telling you, this offense mode is very common. Often we're not even aware that a defense mode is being used. Maybe you are on your YouTube live, like I often do, and you discuss a topic in depth. And someone comes and uh, leaves a comment that really doesn't end up with your uh, topic. Or they leave a comment, but they suggest that you have issues, or they suggest that your explanation cannot be valid because you're too, too young, or they come with some type of nonsensical statement to discredit you. They are in the offense mode. Why? Because it's easier to 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 to, to, to feel the victim, it's easier to play the victim and to use that as an excuse to attack someone. It's easier to uh, it's easier to attack and play the victim than it is to just remain still, receive the constructive criticism, face yourself, and make attack uh, and make changes. A lot of people have this deep rooted pride going on. They have this deep rooted pride that they do not want to be challenged, especially not by people younger than them. They have a deep rooted pride, a deep rooted resentment against being challenged. They go on offense mode. And I'm here to tell you plainly some people out there have nothing valuable to offer than just being offended. Sometimes they mention facts in what they're saying. So you think, hmm, this individual is saying something interesting. But when you really check what it is they're talking about, you realize very quickly that the only thing they're doing is ventilating rage. They are offended. That is the only thing that you get out of them. Do they offer solutions? Do they even suggest or hint towards people who can offer solutions? Are they even interested to head into the direction of solutions? No, they don't. They just want to ventilate their resentment to make a point. And they believe sincerely that making that point is so relevant. They'll, they'll push themselves to make that point even at the expense of other people. Especially if they're older and the, and the public is younger. The offense mode. It's a narcissistic defense mechanism that a lot of people use because it's quite easy, especially if the victim or the target is younger than you or less experienced. For example, if someone brings up something of your past that's not related to the conversation or to the issue, if the thing from the past is relevant, then it's, then it's justified. For example, if someone is called out on their lack of communication and people call out their past call out past events in which they act the same way, that's justified. But if someone is upset with you, for example, for forgetting your car keys, and then they start talking about how a lot of people didn't like you at high school, then you're gonna think, huh, where's the connection over here? There is no connection. And it's not even about the car keys that they're complaining about. They just want to ventilate resentment. And they feel entitled to ventilate it at your expense. And they expect you to just take it so they are these. Such people may even physically attack you and escalate when you call them out on their negative behavior. They wouldn't do that to a police officer. They wouldn't do that to their employer. They wouldn't even do that to some of the adults out there because they know that they may face physical retaliation. But with you, they felt comfortable to, to escalate because they thought they can get away with it or they can at least overpower you if you challenge them. 
the offense mode. That's the mode a lot of people are in because they don't want to deal with the painful facts. Because think about it. If they would stop all the disliking, if they would stop all the hating, if they would stop all the gaslighting, they would stop all the bitterness and resentment, if they would stop all of that, then they still need to deal with the painful facts they were running away from all, all, all the time. And now that they've stopped with resentment, with dislike and hatred, now they also need to deal with the consequences of their past resentment, dislike and hatred. So, a lot of folks just don't want to be bothered with reality. They live in this fable, rea fable reality, as I call it, and this fable reality, they can just escape and walk away from any challenge and any situation that they want, and nobody has a right to say anything to them. Even when they just did something that's wrong and people call them out on it, they have a right to just ignore it and pretend it never happened. That's the type of fable reality that they operate in. Well, that reality does not exist, it only exists in their minds, but that's what they're holding on to. The actual reality itself that shows them that they are accountable and responsible for their contribution, that they are vulnerable creatures just like everyone else, that they are not the Happy Father, that they are not God, and that they are not little gods with private universes. All that reality is too much for them. Anytime they come with someone who is quite real, with real I mean solution oriented, you can only be re you can only be solution oriented when you're realistic. So anytime they come with someone that's actually solution oriented, they freak out. They get upset. They go into the offense mode. Do not fall for the offense mode. Don't be impressed by it. Nine out of, out of ten times when someone is offended or when someone, someone is resentful, it's just to hide facts they don't want to face. Maybe someone is very upset with you, saying you have a big mouth and all of that. But at the same time, at home, she has a husband that doesn't give her much emotional affection and uh, he often shouts at her and all of that. But she's not willing to face the fact that she decided to stay with a defective man. She doesn't want to uh, face that about herself. So she, now she just wants to, an outlet by being upset with someone else. So they will make up charges just to be upset with you. Yes, they would. Especially worldly women tend to do this, so beware of it. Maybe the group is doing it. Maybe you have a migrant community from Morocco that is disliked or sometimes even hated in host country. But the Moroccans have been there for like three, almost four generations already. But still, there, there's racism against them. Now, what's the real issue? There is a lot of corruption and financial mismanagement in the host country amongst the native people. And the native people are always running away from it. But this is something that they can't get away with, running away from their own issues as a community. And now we have the Moroccan migrants who notice all of this and they mention it. And now they feel humiliated and embarrassed that outsiders who just came and live in their country can see it. So now, to prevent those outsiders from noticing their defects, people develop dislike, even hatred towards that migrant community. That's the purpose of xenophobia. To have a layer of anger around the group so that people can't see the bullshit of the group. So, the offense mode, do not be impressed by it. When you see people or a group having the offense mode, realize that they're out of their minds and that they're capable to explode and cause a lot of harm. So lower contact, keep them at a safe distance and move away peacefully. Agree with Christ and be at peace.